Uh, Philly kids, since you've been gone, all that's left is a band of gold. Do, 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 do. Hey, Scotty, we were in uh, we were in Walmart a couple of days ago, and I mean they're already playing uh, Christmas music. <laughs> you know, I'm walking around a Walmart. I hear Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Feliz Navidad, Prospero Año y Felicidad. I'm like, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. It, Who's it, that? Jose uh, Feliciano, right? Jose Feliciano. Yeah, I mean it's never too early, I guess, man. <laughs> It's never too early for Christmas. Dude, they've been playing Christmas music since the end of <laughs> September, bud. You want to uh, listen before I hit the uh, start button? You want to chair us up? Yeah. Well, day do... before Thanksgiving, Philly Kid, only show of the week. Big news, Suki and Scott show. We got distributors. We got marketers. We got all kinds of syndication companies going on. Philly Kid, I can't keep my head on straight. Nice. Dead game. Let me... Uh... My you... Facebook on my laptop acts weird, and I can't share it for some reason. All right, see what you can do. We got time. So let me do it Load with it my. Up. Let me do it on my phone here. Everybody loading up. Jeannie Clay in the house. Jackie Anderson. We got an amazing show today, Philly kid. So many great guests coming up next week. We have amazing shows coming up, and uh, it's all happening, my friend. It's all happening soon. Okay. Oh, I hear us. I hear us. Yes. Here we go. Share button. Right post. There you go, my friend. Hey all. Come check it out, and it's shared up, bro. Let me know. You're ready to rock and roll? Let's do this. Billy Kid, here we go, baby, in three, two, and a one. The Suki and Scott Show. This is one of the funnest shows I've ever done. Hey, hey, when you're with me, I'm smiling. It's musical. It's magical. Suki and Scott, the seven of hearts. Woo! Exactly. This is a sexy show. Someone's getting some action. Now, these larger-than-life personalities are on an exciting new journey as they bring you the Suki and Scott Show. You guys I nailed it. You're great. You ask great questions. You listen. I answered you because I have respect for you guys, and it was a question respectfully put. The Suki and Scott Show is your one-stop destination for humor. You like De Niro and Kate Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> Entertainment. Just Just girl. Girl. Wonderful. Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? <laughs> and optimism. You guys have such amazing energy. Ultraviolet light, it gets in there and it just fights. It just fights the uh, gun flu. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Let's laugh together. I love him. The Suki and Scott Show. Oh, uh, yeah, Philly kid. We've been laughing together 260 shows since the beginning of COVID, my friend. Um, somebody still, wrote us. Yeah, still number one. Still, still number, number one. one. Rolling along on Star Crackle Plus. We start uh, December 1st. Uh, we're on View It. We're going to be on Me TV Network. Uh, we just put up a, an announcement today. Golden Media and Syndication we're working with, along with Meltzer Media, to syndicate and distribute the show. Uh, wow. So listen, we just keep pump, we just keep pumping out the content, my friend. And yeah, uh, and, and, it, and it's and it's not just content; it's quality content. Well, listen, with, it's quality. It's not crap, if you will. With, with celebrities <laughs> from around the world clamoring to be on the Suki and Scott show. I mean, it's it's quality. It's not yeah, just content. I guess so, Phil. I guess. And listen, I was saying before we started, um, Suki was going to be here uh, about ten minutes ago. She texted me uh, in, a, in a crazed panic. Uh, something happened to one of her neighbors next door that she had to attend to. Uh -oh. And um, please grab Phil. Uh, you know, you were going to be on anyway today, Philly, of course, singing later right. on. But uh, so Suki can't join us today. Uh, but we have an amazing, amazing show coming up. Nonetheless, um, Jernes Corchado is coming up in just a second. Phil, this girl, she's 26 years old. She's a singer. She's an actress. She's a producer. She's been in my favorite show, Blacklist. You know me. I'm always talking about about, about <laughs> yes. red, and um, yes. she she she's part of. Uh, I mean, she's got so many things going on. We're going to talk to her about all of it. She's calling in from from. Uh, she's on from San Juan, Puerto Rico today. Uh, her signal looks amazing. She's right by the ocean. Nice. And um, we're going to talk to her today. She's in this new podcast series for Blood or Justice. Uh, which is like takes you back to the old audio days, way before our time, when yeah. you know, the, when these dramas and these crime dramas were on the radio. Uh, this is one of those things. It's eight episodes. She plays a couple characters. You know who else is there? There's so many actors 
uh, who play characters in this in this podcast. Yeah, your, your, your boy Danny Trejo's in it. Con mi favorito, yeah. Danny Trejo. That's nice. your guy, Mr. Yeah. Machete. Mr. Machete's <laughs> in this one. Yes. Um, and then, of course, later on, we got Frida Payne coming up. Legendary musician, artist, uh, recording artist, Frida Payne. Another, you know, soundtrack to our childhood. Hell Band yeah. of Gold, one of the biggest songs, you know, in the 70s. Uh, yep. So Frida's coming on. She's busier than ever. She's got a new book out. She's been touring. She's been singing. Uh, and then Marsha Collier, uh, she's an author. We usually have two guests, Philly kid. We're going two, three for the price of two today because it's before Thanksgiving and uh, it's our only show of the week. Marsha Collier is going to be here. Uh, she's got a book that actually comes out today. Um, it's Android smartphones for seniors for dummies. Um, I don't know I mean, if that's if that's kind of um, you know replicating there, but. Uh, <laughs> You know, I know the the older I get, the dumber yeah, I yeah. get. So that's for sure. And I know, you know, dealing with our uh, our parents, it's like you know, taking a blank baby's brain when you're teaching them the uh, <laughs> the smartphone. <laughs> so she's got a book coming out today. Uh, nice. We got we got a lot to do. So uh, let's rock and roll. You ready for um, Jernest? Yes, sir. Jer- I keep saying Jer- it's, I got to get it right. I, she told me before I forgot already. I keep saying it's Jernest or Jernest. I think it's Jernest, Phil. Corchado, but was she going to let us know in a second? But anyway, yeah, yeah, she'll, she'll tell us. Uh, it's journalist. That's it. It just popped back into my head. Uh, like journalist, it's journalist. Journalist. Okay. Um, but anyway, so she she's like she she's she's a triple threat, Phil. You she's know, the whole she's, package. She whole sings. Package. She dances. She acts. She produces. Um, now she. I was just telling you about this podcast, but as I was looking at things for her online, I saw a couple music videos for her. Yeah. Um, and she's like, you got to check this out. So I figure, you know, what? I'm going to bring her in. We usually play a video for, for the guests. I'm bringing her in with one of her music videos and you're not going to stop dancing for the next two hours. Uh, here it is. We'll bring uh, Jerniston on the other side. Take it. <laughs> Sorry, Phil. Hold on. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) Dime más. Dime más. I love it. Surprise. Oh, my God. (laughs) Sharonist, how are you? I am good. I'm good. How are you? Oh, we're great. Hold on. Very nice to meet you. And Philip. Phil? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Phil. Phil. (laughs) My my friends call me Phil or Felipe. What you know. Okay. Are you Latino? (laughs) Sí, sí. Nice. Chicano, Chicano orgulloso. Gracias, yeah. gracias. Well, this song is for for Selena. I did it. Oh, uh, man. A tribute for for all this Selena and for Selena fans who yeah. you know I love her and um, I wanted to make a song that was like bidi bidi bomb bomb like it had that energy. And yeah, so yeah. La Bamba came about. And for people that don't know what La Bamba is in Puerto Rico, we call lips and especially like red lips. Uh, Bemba. So, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. she always had the, the iconic red lipstick on. Yeah, yo sé, yo sé. Yeah, and, uh, and, and, you know, I was listening to your music on the, on, on the, my uh, my streaming service all day today, and it's on my playlist now. And, <laughs> and <laughs> I love it. And, and when I was listening to it, I actually, I actually got that Selena vibe, and I, and I thought that. Yeah. I thought, yeah. yeah. So that's really nice. Really awesome. Nice. Awesome. And I always wish I had lips, so I really enjoyed it because... <laughs> I don't really have any lips. <laughs> Jonas, how are you? So listen, so you're in San Juan, Puerto Rico right yes. now. Yeah. Uh, you, you're going back and forth between there and L.A., which is uh, which is pretty cool. Um, and you're just, you know, you're busier than ever. Let's let's talk about the podcast first. Yeah, uh, of course. Because that's, that's the most current. I know we've got a couple other things to get to. Yeah. For Blood or Justice, 
you know what? Let me play the little trailer real quick. Yes. Uh, and then we'll talk about any other side because this real like brings you back to to the old days of of dramas on the radio. Take a look. You're saying that she was tortured? More an experiment. What are you talking about, Turner? One of them got out, sir. Help! Please help. Me. This goes beyond the badge. I'll meet you in hell, old friend. For blood or justice, season one. Yes. Hey. So, so, so let me give let me give you the details, Phil. Ready? I'm going to give it to you in my announcer voice. Here we go. 1977. A Texas lawman hunts two psycho killers across Texas and into Mexico. How was that? How was that? All right. That was pretty great. I think that you're <laughs> in the season of it. <laughs> let me let me know if you need me. But uh, listen. So you play. There's a, there's a whole bunch of actors in this thing. Um, like I was saying, Danny Trejo's in there, and Steven Weber's part of it. Um, Kellen Lutz, I think. Uh, They're he's strong, the, just like right. the A-listers of. Yeah, Boys yeah, it's, it, it's it's crazy, yeah. and, and it's so it's this eight-episode scripted series. How did you get involved with it, and what led what led you? know, listen, you're you're in your mid twenties, right? Yeah. You, and we're talking about audio only, which to most mid twenties, that's like a foreign thing for them. Uh, what led you to, you know, get get your interest in this in this podcast? Um, this had just happened. Um, the opportunity came up. It was just like I think it was March or April of the pandemic, like the beginning of the pandemic, and right. everyone was just st everything was stopped. And I had just I wasn't I was always doing voiceover auditions and all of that, but I didn't even have like a studio in my apartment. But in that moment, um, you know, everything was stopped. So I bought all my equipment. Right and I was like, yeah, this is everything I'm going to do now. So I'm, I better get, you know, ready. And my agent came, uh, called me and, you know, talked about this show. And I loved it, especially the fact that Danny Trejo was going to be on it and it was going to be a part yeah. of it. Um, I loved that it was like a horror noir. Uh, the, the script was amazing. I actually, as an actress, I was like, hey, like, are you ever going to do this as a live action series? I want to be a part of it. <laughs> and I want to be with Danny Trejo, you know, on this. Oh, yeah. He's great. So He's really good. excited. And, and it's just, it's a, it's an amazing drama. People were going to, you know, as you said, not, not everyone is, you know, listening to podcast series right now, but I think it's becoming more famous and, and more trendy. And, and I think people are really tuning in and, it's honestly one of the best series I've ever heard. Yeah, no, it's awesome. Right. That, that's really awesome. awesome. I got to tell you, um, did you did you get to uh, be in the studio with with uh, uh, Mr. Trejo when no, you guys you. are you guys all together or is it separate? No, I didn't. It's so sad. Oh. Um, it's I believe a lot in manifestation, and I had told myself that I wanted to work with Danny Trejo at some point in my life. Um, so I did in a weird way, but <laughs> I haven't yet. Um, it, this was all, you know, we had to work with Scott, the director, and Todd, um, the creator of the show. Um, and we were just, you know, I was in my little room, uh, just, you know, being directed by him and, and doing whatever, you know, he told me to do, but I never, I actually didn't get to talk to Dani Trejo at all. Even wow. though our, our oh our man, that, that's too yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you guys, everybody lays down their stuff separately and then you get to hear this, this thing when it's all put together and you don't only, you don't only play one character, but you're doing three different characters, right? Yes. Yeah. So, um, I got my characters, Yala, this, uh, young woman that you know she decides to work for a strip club to make some money and um she gets abducted by these crazy uh killers and um you know criminals so i did i i voiced her and i also voiced like a grandma and like different roles here and there that they just needed i don't even remember at this point but i know i know that i did a couple <laughs> of different roles. <laughs> hey, now, i gotta i gotta tell you a quick uh, uh mr trejo story i uh when, you know, I'm a, I'm a wannabe actor from way back. And uh, my very first uh, big time uh, project I was on, I played thug number one with uh, with Danny Trejo in uh, in the movie Bullet. And Hold he, on, I, I think I have that right here, <laughs> oh Phil. <my> yeah, <laughs> look at that. Yeah. There you I, go. I, yeah, I wind up getting blown, <laughs> I wind up getting blown up in the trunk of a car by by. Uh, by him, and uh, it, it's off. Awesome. You know, when we were on set, he he was there, and you know, he was very very friendly. But still, you know, I've seen him in the mo these movies all these years, and, and just his look, you know, I thought, man, I want to go over there and get a picture with him, but I'm afraid he might uh, kill me, you know. He's so, iconic. <laughs> he's but, iconic. I that he I'm 
I'm dying to work with him. I know yeah. it's going to happen. I just, he's just one of those people that you look up to as an act, especially as right. a Latino actress. You're like, wow, like this right. man did it, you know? Yeah. And you especially know, yeah. with all his, you know, all his background, it's just crazy that you, he, from being in prison, I think he was at some point, and then yeah, now he's yeah. a big star. So that's awesome. That's crazy. Yeah. And, and when uh, Andrea McKinnon, who does the PR for the podcast, mm -hmm. was asking me about who we wanted, I gave him, I gave her two names. I said, you. And I want Danny Trejo. I want Trejo on the show. Uh, but no, it's great. You, well, you, I hope you, that you get him. I well, we'll get him. We'll go. I'll, I'll bust her chops until she gets yes. him on the show. Um, so, so this. Uh, let me just say because it's available um, on Revolver Podcasts and Apple and Google and Spotify. Really, wherever the uh, you know the, the podcast can be downloaded. Right. And this is one of those. It, how it, it's eight episodes. How long is each episode? About an hour. No, I think 23 minutes. 20, oh, that's it. Like 23 less minutes. than 30 minutes. If I Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's um, great. Yeah. If you're on like a long trip in the car, you just want to be right, chill out, listen to something great. I mean, it, it, it sounds like, you know, I could have used it the other day on my way to Penn State. I was in the car for four hours. I needed a good podcast. It's exciting. <laughs> I love that podcasts are like so trendy now because, you know, it's, it's a platform that I didn't use to use until like maybe a year or two ago. Right. And now I was in Costa Rica the other, like about a month ago. And we had road trips like that, four hour road trips. And that's what kept us going, honestly, just like being excited. You know, it feels like a movie. Yeah, yeah. Really Wait, is, nice. is, is Scott Wilde the fellow you were talking about, the fellow you were working with? Yeah, yeah. That's that's him. <laughs> All right, Scott, just confirm. We'll get we'll get Danny over there at some point. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> uh, I love Jonas. Listen, so let's talk about. Um, I got to talk about blacklist because I'm yeah. I'm a Phil knows I'm I'm like a black fist the black fit blacklist lunatic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, same here. I, I, I love the show. I think Red is one of the best characters ever on TV. He's wonderful, um, and he's you know when Phil and I were young, way before your time, you know we were watching James Spader. He had long blonde hair. He was a teenager in high school playing you know a kid like you know who had a drug problem in high school. You know, and and he's just always been just this amazing actor. Um, what was that like for you? Just be now again, like Danny, were you in any scenes with him? No, no. So funny. <laughs> no, I wasn't. My my character. Um, I don't know. I think that they did it on purpose as a wom woman criminal. You were an assassin, right? I'm an assassin. Yeah. I'm a teenager assassin. Yes. The craziest yes. thing. I thought he was one of the coolest. Uh, jobs I've ever gotten to be that, to be like such a badass. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, I actually was in college. So most of my career I've been in college. I graduated about two years ago, um, but I did this while I was still in college. And I remember being in a film class and I think we were discussing, I, I might say the title wrong, but it's like sex, uh, sex and tapes, something like it's with James Spader, but it's a movie that he did a long time ago sex lies and videotape yes that yeah. one and yeah. i remember just watching this movie before my audition and i'm like oh, this man this actor he's just so amazing like what a face like he's so amazing and then a month later i'm like working on his show which is <laughs> crazy um it's crazy and so i was really excited to be part of that show but i never got to work with him i worked with the ladies from the show um but it was still awesome it was like one of the best experiences um to to be in a show like that which is a huge success yeah um but also i don't know i remember even you know seeing cars being exploded in front of me and like using guns and like you know running at 6 a.m in a rooftop in new york city while it's like freezing outside <laughs> it was just awesome <laughs> that's so great yeah he was you know who you look like in this picture right here who um the, the actress from uh, Wizards of Waverly Place. What's her name? Selena Gomez? Selena Gomez. You look like a little bit like Selena People Gomez. People tell me there. that. People tell me yeah, that. Yeah, with the That's hood. Funny. I never would have thought that in that picture I looked like her. For some reason. <laughs> hold on. I got I got blurry for some reason. Let me just fix that. Yeah, Phil, you guys talk. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to fix this for a second. I don't yeah. know why, but my, my, my so camera what, just got blurry. Okay. Yeah. I see so you. What, yeah, you look good to me. You guys talk. Go ahead. I'll fix it. <laughs> yeah, so anyway... Are there any other plans for uh, for more music in the future? Because I sure hope so. You're on my playlist now, and uh, thank you. I got to tell you, any plans? 
Well, yes. Um, so the music thing, I've always wanted to do it. And it wasn't until the pandemic that I decided to, you know, I had the time. I was here in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico is one of the biggest hubs for Spanish music. And so I decided to do it. I was just, I had a lot of songs that I had written um, and just everything aligned. And I have a couple of songs coming out. Um, I pretty much have a good number of songs so that I can release an album if I wanted to. So hopefully, you know, at this point, I'm just releasing um, a single every one or two months right. and in where it takes me. Um, it's exciting and it's weird. It's like, it's such a different um, industry of its own. I, I, I always thought that, you know, all these industries were the same, but they're not. Like, right, that's what right, right, like, right. The music industry is a completely different animal. Yeah. So uh, is it, are they going to be Spanish language or are you doing going to do any English? Uh, as of now, yes, but I do have a couple of English songs that I haven't recorded. I have written, and hopefully, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that over the holidays. And and yeah, I have a movie actually coming out. Um, the name is uh, they changed the name, so I'm like thinking about it because they've changed the name a couple of times. <laughs> but it's the Housewives of the North Pole. Of the North Pole, I saw yes. that. Yeah, nice. Talk. Yeah, yeah, Which, yeah. Actually, I don't know if you've seen, but Betsy Brand is also on it. She was um, on Breaking Bad, and she's one of the leads on it. Oh, that's amazing. Ooh. Now, you so, also, yeah. tell, tell me about um, Raise Your Hand. Uh, was that done when you were, how long ago did you guys do that one? We did that when I was uh, six years ago. So when you were, were you still in college at the time? Yes, I was just barely in college. I think I was in my second, third year in college. All right, um, well, but before you continue, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play the trailer for that. Yes. And then we'll talk about it. Take, Philly, take a look at this. I'd like to share something I wrote for tonight. You like writing? I love writing. I think you writing a play for class is a great idea. It could be a story about how somebody doesn't have a place to stay. I remember that day. I never thought that would happen to me. What about a scene about a girl that gets pregnant? She tells her man, I'm in high school. I work and I have to take care of my siblings. You can walk home. You can walk home. I feel like half of the things that she wrote in here, I'm obligated to report to family services. Have you seen Wish? I think I've seen him go in the room with Leela. We know how to love, how to hate, how to hustle, how to lie, how to hurt. And all of it comes with a price. I'm not one of your stories, Gia. I know I've gotten in lots of trouble lately. I can't live holding all these things inside anymore. This is how I feel inside. You cut me way too deep this time. So I'm Ooh, yeah, I gotta tell you, you know, I, That's I'm pretty always, deep, deep stuff I'm, right there. Yeah, I'm always looking for inspiration wherever I can find it. And, and, and anytime I see a project like that and I watch it and I get goosebumps like I just did. That's, uh, yeah, I got to see it. I got to see it. You know it. what? It's actually, um, it just won Best Director and Best Actress. I got Best Actress yesterday in the nice. City International nice. Festival. And um, it's actually now playing for everyone that wants to watch it um, online on the ABFF, the um, African Black, oh, is it, Afri I, I want to say this right, the American Black Film Festival. I want to say that. I hope that I'm saying that right. ABFF.com. It's showing um, our film right now, and you can vote. And but it's just such a. I even watching that that gives me the goosebumps because it's yeah. It's, power, <laughs> it's such a powerful story, and even today I was just talking to my mom, and she showed it for the first time to my dad, and they were wow. watching it, and my dad got mad. He was like, "This movie, you didn't tell me it was this strong. <laughs> like I can't do this." I won't be able to sleep at night. Like, what if it's, <laughs> you know, my dad watching these like incredibly like hard scenes where I'm in these situations that, you know, they're very real and, um, mm -hmm. and, but it's tough for a dad to watch that, you know? And so, but it's, it's that, it's that type of film. And I think that, you know, when I was working on it, I, I always felt it's like, wow, this is the type of films that go to the Oscars. Yeah. And, yes. Um, and, you know, uh, the director, uh, Jessica Ray, she's just such a wonderful writer, create, uh, producer, director. And I just know that, you know, it's the beginning of, of a lot of, of work for her as well. 
Jarnus, what was your um what was your dad's take on um my babysitter is an alien? <laughs> what do you what do you think of that one? I think my babysitter <laughs> that was my is a... <laughs> I think that was my first ever movie. And I to be honest, I don't think I've even seen it. You've never I've seen it? I saw it once and I was a little ashamed because <laughs> Because, you know, I think I was, like, trying to be, like, super old, like, at that moment in my life. I was just, like, too cool to watch it. Oh, but Because so um, <laughs> I did that, like, I think I was, like, 19. Um, and, but my baby brother, I have a eight-year-old brother, and he loved it. Yes, that's him. <laughs> that's that little guy right there? Yes. <laughs> I actually, you know, I, I was going to take a, I, I saw a picture of you and your family. You have a you know, a gorgeous family, your mom, your dad, everybody's so, such a good looking, you know, good looking group. Um, But yeah, I found that one and uh, I saw you holding your brother there. He's yeah. a cute kid. He's going to be a lady <laughs> killer. <laughs> yeah. He's going to be a lady killer when he gets older. Oh my God. Um, yeah. But he loves it, and uh, it's funny. I don't. You didn't mention it, but even Kukui the Boogeyman, which is one of my favorite movies. Like I love that movie so much, and especially because it's like it's a Latino film. I'm like a Latino superhero for all you know the people watching, and it's about the Kukui el, el Cuco, which you know we grew up <laughs> watching and li I mean not watching but listening stories about him. Hearing about it, yeah. Yeah, and so um, even this last ha um, Halloween, I think it was the first Halloween that I spent with my brother. He was like, he religiously watches that movie in Halloween. Like he's like, he puts it on and he's like so in it. And I just, I think that's like the best gift. Oh my to God. To see him being yeah. so, you know, excited. That's awesome. That's awesome. That is great. And also, you know, we can't forget because it's on Netflix and it's it's always up there. Um, Sneakerheads, right? Which was a pretty successful pop for you guys. Um, yeah. It's it's came out in September and obviously it's, uh, it's still, not that came out this September, right? Uh, last September. Oh, it's, oh, so it's over a year old. Okay. Yes, yes. Gotcha. But okay, it's so sneaker how Netflix works. You know, people keep discovering it. Um, and it was such a, it, it changed my life. Like, I think that's when I, um, you know, more people watch it. I think that's one of the, the best projects I've had um, that has gotten that big of an audience. Right. Um, and it was, it, it was awesome. Uh, I always tell this story because when I got this part, I think I got it the day before I had to be on set. <laughs> um, they had re-released re, re the role um, on Friday, and I think I I auditioned for it on Sunday, got the part on Monday, had to be on set on Tuesday, and I wasn't a real sneakerhead. I didn't know anything about shoot. I didn't know, <laughs> like, listen, I didn't know anything about sneakers, <laughs> anything. And so I was so nervous because I had to become this, like, the biggest sneakerhead, like, sneakerhead i had to be the best like you know the one that you would contact the person that knew everything about everything and so it was a very nerve-wracking role for me and that's experience. so funny so funny well listen but people the, believe it so that's good oh <laughs> my god yeah i gotta go i gotta go check that one out too um blood or justice uh it's out now right all eight episodes and uh like i said you know you know what let me play the trailer one more time only because it's it's so short let's play it one more time uh, so people could see. You're saying that she was tortured? More an experiment. What are you talking about, Turner? One of them got out, sir. Help. Please help. Me. This goes beyond the badge. I'll meet you in hell, old friend. For blood or justice, season one. <laughs> I love it. And you know what's funny? When I when I was in college mm -hmm. and I was interning, we had one of those NPR national public radio stations next door. Uh, right attached to the school. I was upstate New York, big broadcasting program, and I interned at the the National Public Radio, and they always replayed, and again, this is in the 80s, but they always replayed those old 1950s dramas, you know, on the big reel-to-reel -reel tapes. I had to swoop them up, um, and I would get to, you know, the, the following is a presentation of NPR, <laughs> and all, you know, the, the shadow knows, and all those, that's what this reminds me of, you know, these the uh, great crime drama that you, you know, you listen to and it's all, you know, theater of the mind kind of stuff. You're biting your nails. You're like, oh, my yeah. God, I'm going to get, get killed. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Uh, Jarnus, listen, you uh, you got a great career going, got everything going for you. Keep doing it. You're a beautiful girl, talented. I love the music. Um, hey, real quick, real quick. Jarnus, when you're sitting around the house and you're just singing your favorite cover songs, what, what what's one of your favorite? Yeah, that yeah. You, Give us a little something. That, Come on, that, let's put let's you put it to work, Philly. Good job, Phil. I I think I listen to a lot of um, 
uh, in my head. <laughs> no, Taylor Swift definitely. For, I was a big fan of her when I was little. But Jewel, I've been list. I've been like singing a lot. Uh, Foolish Games from Jewel. Um, you got 30, 30, 30 seconds. Let's hear. Go ahead. Oh my god. Oh my god. You're gonna put me in the top. <laughs> These foolish games are tearing me apart. Something like that. <laughs> I haven't practiced this. Oh my god. But this, that's the song nice. that I'm like. I'm in the shower and listening, you know, like hearing in my head. <laughs> hey, wait, I, 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 want, I need to hear 10 more seconds. I could yes. see me, I could see me in my car, just, yes. just you know, pointing out the people, window. When you're in the gym, you know, when you're running, you know, when you want to have like a good day, just put that song and you're going to be happy. Oh, I love it. Jaredis, yeah, thank you yeah. so much. It, it's just an absolute pleasure to have you on. Um, let me get that up there one more time. The, uh, the podcast so for been Blutter. A yeah, listen, for Blutter Same Justice, uh, Jaredis plays three different characters. The main one is Yada. Um, and, and you got to check it out. It's eight episodes, a revolver podcast, Apple, Google, Spotify. Um, go check that out because it's, I listened to the first one, uh, and it's really, really cool. Jonas, thank Waiting for more music, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, Philly, she, go on. She's got a bunch of videos on there. Really good. Yeah, yeah. Um, Jonas, thank you so much and congrats on everything. And hope, listen, next movie that comes out, come back on. We'll promote Yes, you. I will. I will. Thank, thank you. So much. Please. It's a pleasure. Take care and have a beautiful day. Thank nice you so much. You. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs> Philly's so talented. Wow. Right? Right? Yes, yes. To be to yeah. be 26 at, at, at a movie star and a pop star and all that other yeah. good stuff. You know, right? you know, you just sit back and go, wow, how can that be a a actual person? I mean, she's 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 beautiful, she has a beautiful voice, she's friendly, <laughs> she's outgoing. I mean, yeah, she's got it all. She's gonna go very far in the business. Very cool. Very cool. Philly kid, yeah. I, I got to ask you one thing. Um, one of the biggest, biggest uh, articles on social media yesterday. Did you see the story about Will Smith? No. Did you see the story about Will Smith? Here's the story about uh, Will Smith revealed he once developed a psychosomatic reaction to orgasms after engaging in rampant sexual intercourse to deal with being cheated on by his first girlfriend, Phil. Now, I just need you to read that again. Just, just let that soak in for a second, Phil. So, so Will Smith got cheated on, and you know what happens when so when you break up with somebody, or or, or someone cheats on you, and you break up. The easiest way to get over it is to find somebody else and move on, right? Isn't that the easiest way to do it? Well, I would think so. Now, now look at this from a man's perspective, Phil. And he got hammered on social media yesterday, crushed. Will Smith got crushed. Just imagine the story. He's having so much sex with so many different women to forget about this one girl that he's actually throwing up after he has sex, Phil. I just need you to, just, as, as a man who has somewhat of a, of a normal brain in his head, I need you to tell me your thoughts on that particular situation. All the things you've seen in your life between being in the military and, and the police force. Will Smith had a traumatic teenage, he was, a, as a teenager, it was very traumatizing for him to have sex with women he would throw up. Yeah, I, uh, you know, my question, <laughs> my, my question would be, You're like, uh, what, the, what are you getting me into here? What, uh, what was he doing that was making him throw up? I just, just that, the, I guess you know, he was, I, I could do 20 minutes <laughs> of, of a stand-up routine just on that subject matter alone. Uh, wow. He got, he got absolutely hammered with this. Absolutely hammered. Yeah, I can understand why. Uh, yeah, that was crazy. But uh, anyway, listen, we move on. Uh, we, we we continue along. Great show. Frida Payne's coming up in just a little bit. Uh, but first, uh, Marsha Collier is a best-selling author. She's an e-commerce expert, Phil. Uh, let me introduce you to her, and then we'll bring her in on the other side. Take a look. Um, Marsha began her iCitizen journey by becoming familiar with eBay and selling goods uh, off of eBay in 1996 and has grown to be the world's foremost authority about buying and selling products on eBay. Marsha has now become an integral part of the eBay business and culture. 
She teaches at eBay University. She speaks at their annual conference. She has written the book eBay for Dummies and is widely known within a number of circles. She was sharing with me this morning that um, she's been a little overwhelmed with uh, her realization at how many people are actually following her. And we've been following Marsha for several years and um, are just delighted that she's here. So here to uh, share with us her journey in the, uh, in the world of being an iCitizen, please welcome Marsha Collier. Uh, yes, please welcome Marsha Collier. <laughs> Hi, Marsha. Hello, hello. How are you gentlemen doing? Boy, to be 26 uh, and a movie star. Can you can imagine? You no, I can't. I can't, Marsha. Every All the guests we have on here, I'm jealous of, and I can't take it anymore. <laughs> I mean, you saw in that video, you know, I knew Barbara Walters, and and I knew Matt uh, Lauer when he sure, still had sure. hair. Right. Sure. So yeah. Yeah. We go Listen, back a I also, I also knew Barbara Walters. My sister was her personal secretary for Isn't many she years. Awesome. She was awesome. I took, I went out on a double date with Barbara Walters and Merv Adelson, her husband at the time, and her daughter Jackie, uh, back when I was about twenty-one years old. Uh, she and I had the same drama teacher. At the time. <laughs> okay. We were not the same age, but the same drama teacher. And when I was on the show once, she let me play with her Hermes $40,000 purse. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> wow. Unbelievable. Yeah, no, she was uh, she was quite the lady, and uh, and she still is. She still is. Uh, but listen, speaking of quite the lady, you have had some type of career. Uh, in, you know, one of the best-selling uh, authors when it comes to this e-commerce stuff, which people are still trying to figure out today. Uh, and I just thought that your book that you have out now, which actually came out today, November 24th, um, which was, uh, let me pop it up here. It's this one, the Android smartphones uh, for seniors for dummies. Um, now, I thought you could, you know, when it comes to smartphones, you really could intertwine dummies and seniors in the same spot, Marcia. But I, well, I know you, you, know, it's you played not it easy. Seniors, not just seniors. No, it's, it's like <laughs> everybody. When my editors, who are much younger than I, were looking at the book and they're going over it and they, I get a text. I didn't know you could do that. Can you do that? <laughs> really? And like. All, all the millennials, they, they learn from the book. So, and the best part is it's in large-er print. Larger Not that print. super large print, <laughs> yeah. but large-er, and it's in full color. So you can actually see what's going on. I love it. And that's, nice. that's the, and you, now you're talking about the Android phones, right? Not the iPhones. This is the Android phones. This the is Samsung. just Android phones. And the reason I wrote about Android phones is because there are so many of them. And it does get confusing, but basically the operating system comes from Google. And when I was writing the book, I had seven phones lined up on my kitchen counter, oh all in chargers, God. because I wanted to be able to teach people the differences between how Samsung and OnePlus and uh, Pixel all handle things differently. Right. And you know, interestingly enough, I found that some of the older phones we're just as good. So if someone's on a budget, you don't really have to lay out a grand for a new phone. Mm -hmm. No, it's it, it, it's amazing. And, you know, I, I goof on my mother all the time because she's in her mid 80s and she she almost can't text me until I text her first. And and it's, you know, the most basic of, of things are it's again, it's like a, you're taking a blank mind of a baby and teaching them for the first time how to use these products, which they're just not interested in anyway, most of them. Um, but it's, it, it's, I think the book you have, I mean, I wish you had one for, for iPhones as well, uh, because somebody needs to sit down, you know, he's all right, Ma, listen, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to teach you. I'll teach you a couple of things. And within three minutes, you're ready to, you're ready to throw the phone. You against know, the wall. One of the things that I say in the book is that those of a certain age, we're not going to call them seniors. Those of a certain age are a little bit embarrassed to ask their kids. I mean, it is kind of humiliating. You brought up this human being who's now an adult and you're asking them questions. Right. And also, as a mom, I want to tell you about the texting thing. I've stopped texting my daughter first because she's always in a meeting and she's always doing this and she's always <laughs> being a big wheel. So, you know, I just wait until I get a good morning or a good afternoon or can I come over and pick up extra mail? 
um, from my daughter and then I'll engage. So, so understand that it's, it's a little bit complex in the relationship. Yeah. No, yeah you know, a, a lot of, a lot of people, you know, older, like me, I'm not a, I'm not a technological guru. And I was talking to my son one time, you know, I'm like, I say, yeah, uh, can you meet me? And he's like, well, yeah, go ahead and drop me a pin to your location. I said, drop, drop a pin. So I'm like, I, what is that? How does that? I love you know? that. Well, that's an <laughs> iPhone thing. But if right. you're on an Android phone and you're using Gboard, which is the Google keyboard, there are three dots in the upper right hand corner of the keyboard. You tap that and then you can scroll down and a thing says location. You tap on that and it'll send a Google map location link right. as the text. So mm. the person receives that and all they have to do is tap on it and they'll get a Google map. And they can do directions from where they are to where you are. Yeah, there was a there was a news story one time. Uh, a lady was actually kidnapped and she was put in the trunk of a car and she still had her cell phone. But she couldn't make any noise. She couldn't talk. So she she dropped a pin or gave the location to her husband and it popped up. And he's like, wow, why is she there? She's not supposed to be there. And uh, which, you know. I wish I knew how to do it because I would just stay kidnapped, I guess, because, I, <laughs> you know, a lot of us are just not technological savvy. And, and uh, your book is really that's going to help a lot of people, I think. Well, it was funny. I was in a taxi in Hong Kong and, you know, you can't read the signs and, and I'm alone and I'm looking. I'm hoping the airport's coming. I'm not seeing a picture of a plane. So I shared my route with my husband in L.A. <laughs> so at least somebody knew if I was you are. in a ditch and, you know, maybe it's like New Jersey. I'm not sure. <laughs> but at least I felt safe. And another thing about the emergency things, and this is something we should really think about. You know how they prompt you to put your emergency information into the phone? Sure. You know what drugs you're... Okay, here's the 411, the truth on that. I went to many firehouses here in Los Angeles. I spoke to fire captains. I said, do you go into the phone and look at that? And I got a lot of laughter. Uh, they said, do you really think we have time for that? Do you really think we get into your phone? First right. of all, <laughs> we're busy. Right. And then it was explained to me that when you get to the hospital, they don't look at your phone first either. They look in your wallet for your ID, obviously your insurance information. <laughs> yeah, <But that's>, yeah, <laughs> yeah, first. Between the insurance information and your driver's license, that's where you should write a piece of paper and put that in your wallet. It's a lot safer. Plus, you know, that emergency window is accessible when your phone is locked. So if you set your phone on a bar and somebody walks over and swipes and takes a look, um, they can see everything and take a yes. picture of all your medical information and it'll go back to a blank screen and you will never know that somebody has all your information. That's and that, very that's very dangerous. That's very true because my uh, my son-in-law, we were in uh, we were in Florida, we were walking along the beach, he dropped his phone, he didn't realize it. Well, a good Samaritan found it and did just that. He he went to the emergency contact information and called my daughter. And uh, so that in that yeah. instance, it worked out well. But well, I'll I, tell you, on an Android phone, you can set up on the lock screen. I won't show you mine because it has my phone number. But scrolling across my lock screen says, if found, reward, please call this number, which goes to a Google number, which would forward that message to my husband and my daughter and let me know that somebody has found my phone so nice. you don't even have to use the emergency information it's built into the phone and that's right. why i wrote the book it's amazing nice. uh, yeah. the name the name of the book is android smartphones for seniors for dummies um marcia i read that when uh when the vaccines first came out and people had to sign up uh you know electronically to go get the vaccines whether it was the hospital cvs or you know whatever the pharmacy was um you actually you went from house to house to your neighbors who were well, who were and, and helped the them and you helped that's them out the book. yeah it, it was ridiculous cvs wasn't doing it or walgreens or anybody at that time it was the first blush of the vaccine and I called, texted my neighbor across the street and she said, I can't figure out how to do it. <laughs> so I went to her house and did it. Then I went to another house and did it. And I'm going around from house to house being the vaccine lady. And then yeah. I realized 
people need help. People need help with their phones on how to do these things. Yeah. So in this book, I go over the basics, like some of the things I told you that, that you didn't know, like the lock screen reward call this yeah. number thing. Um, important things that will help people in their lives and make using an Android phone, which is probably going to save them money. And it'll, it'll be great. It really will help them. Yeah, it's funny. Most of many of our audience, they're all writing in. We need this book. We need this book. Uh, you know, it's all folks, you know, 45 plus around the country. Um, and again, the name of the book is uh, Android Smartphones for Seniors for Dummies. Uh, Marsha, listen, we, we got a couple of, you know, about two, three minutes. Um, of course, it's Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Cyber Monday, uh, you know, mom and pop store Saturday. What's 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 the what's the best way to get these deals that everybody says okay, that they, they have tips. floating around? Here's some quick tips that are important. Make your list right now. Okay. Make your list right now. Put in a budget as to how much you want to spend with that person. Put a sample item or two that you might want to buy for that person. This is before you even go anywhere. Right. Then go to Twitter. I know this sounds ridiculous. Find the retailers or the manufacturers of the items that you want to buy. Okay. Follow their Twitter accounts, tap on the little bell so that you will get a notification every time they post because okay. for the site from cyber, uh, from black Friday through cyber Monday week, they're going to be posting quick deals at random times and your phone will ding with a notification and let you know that it's happened. So that's a real simple way. Just go to Twitter, sign up for their notifications. You can undo it after the holidays. But this way, you're going to really know what the deal is. Beautiful. And be sure that any website that you go to is one that you know about. This is not the time of year to be looking at a website that you've never been to. And you go, oh, that's an interesting name. But I really like their stuff. And the page looks so professional. <laughs> oh, Scammers yeah. are doing this like yeah. crazy just to get personal information. Unreal. So you have to be very careful. Shop with brands or manufacturers or somebody that's recommended to you. This is not the time to discover new things. Right. <laughs> all, right. the, all the bad actors are out there. Totally. Uh, it's, it's crazy. Well, uh, uh, Marsha Collier, she's the best selling author, e commerce expert, Android smartphones for seniors, for dummies. And again, anybody, you know, you, you know, you know what's going on as you get older. It's harder and harder for all of us to work these things. Uh, build confidence with your smartphone. This book actually came out today. Uh, so if you're looking for a, a, a Hanukkah Christmas gift, um, for, you know, for your grandmother, your it's mother, perfect. this is a, it's a great book. I got to get this for my mother. Um, Thank and, you. And, and listen, it's, it's available uh, on Amazon, Kindle, uh, and Audible. Uh, you can. Is, an, is there is there a um, an audible book as well? If you don't read it, you have. Uh, there always is. So I'm going to assume that. But it just launched today. You can reach me on social media at Marsha Collier. In every book I've ever written is my email address. Okay. So if you have a question and you want have a particular problem, email me. I promise I get back to everybody. Um, to me, this is a personal thing between me and the reader. It's not just a book. Right. It's a connection. It's good. And listen, don't give me your phone number because uh, everyone will be calling you. I got a uh, Google voice. Number. <laughs> there you go. Marsha, nice. listen, thank you so much. Such helpful information. Have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, maybe like around like Christmas time, we'll have you back for some more tips for all that, the online that would be shopping. Awesome. And enjoy the parade. I'm so bummed that I'm not there for the parade this year. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I always choose to. I was. I actually got to be the announcer for the parade once on CBS, but I, I would much rather be on my couch with my kids watching right? those floats go by. Like, <laughs> yeah. Last night I watched the Rockettes rehearse. They did a Facebook Live while they were oh, rehearsing nice. in the street. That's great. So, yeah. That is great. Marsha, thank you so much. Absolute pleasure. Uh, you know, congrats on all your success. And again, before yes. the holidays, you'll come back, spend a few minutes with us. Oh, always. You're my kind of people. We haven't even gotten into that. <laughs> great. All right. Great. Great. Marsha, thank Marcia. you so much. Bye-bye, Philip. Bye-bye, Scott. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Wow, Phil, she's great. She's great. <laughs> oh, I, man. Yeah. I, I'm going to be getting that book. I got to get that from my yes. mother and a couple yes, other people exactly. I know. A couple of people I used to work with who were up in that age bracket who used to, you know, they sit and they smack, they smack on the phone and... <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, it's you so, know, it's so frustrating for them. You know, perfect perfect example for me is uh, I was driving. I left my house and I was driving to work one day, and I forgot my phone. So I said, so, I thought, okay, I'll call my wife and have her bring it to me. So I reached for my phone. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized, wait a minute, you, you don't, don't have, have your phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's so great. Uh, well, listen, Phil, we move along now. We have uh, coming up just a, a woman who's an absolute legend. Woo! We, we've had we've had so many legendary performers on the show: uh, Melba Moore, Taylor Dane. Um, I mean, it's too, even too, too many to think of. We've done so many shows and had such amazing people. But um, Frida Payne. Uh, you know, she she came into our lives with with her smash hit band of gold. Uh, we all grew up with that song. It was the, the soundtrack to our childhood. Since you've been gone, all that's left is a band of gold. Um, and there have been, I think that song has been covered more than any other song. When you look at YouTube, uh, and I grabbed a couple covers that I'm going to show Frida. I think she's gonna she's gonna last. Some of them, couple are great. Some of them not so great. Um, but here she is, Frida Payne. Um, she was, you know, through the 60s, 70s and 80s. And, and, and she's busier now than ever. She's back on tour. She's singing. Uh, still amazing. Here she is a little bit. Now we're going to bring her in on the other side. Take a look. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. <laughs> Frida. Hi. Frida, how are you? And look, you can hear us perfectly. It's beautiful. I can hear you perfect. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. You look terrific. You don't look did you have, you don't look a day over 30. What what's going on here? Well, you I would say partly genetics and also <laughs> other, you know, good supplements, good diet. Uh, I eat everything. I eat meat, of course, and uh, I eat everything. I eat vegetables, but but I have. I and I've also done yoga for over forty, almost forty five years. Of course, That's I had to amazing. push back on that because I had knee replacement done in twenty twenty, and then I just had shoulder replacement done uh, five and a half months ago. So you can look good on the inside, but you're yeah. still your age on the uh, on the. I mean, look good on the outside, but you're still your age on the inside. Well, well you, you know, when, no, yeah. when you when you when you look at your stuff online, I mean, you know, you're always going to be young for us because you know, forever young, based off of you know all the history you have, uh, and now just you know with everything at our fingertips, it's just so easy. Uh, you know, to reach out and, and see you and, and just, you know, at any age, at any time. And you look amazing no matter what age you are. Well, you know, other than age, I'd like to address the fact that Van de Gaulle, although that was like my number one big hit, mm -hmm. which came out in 1970, I, my career is so much more expansive than that. That's sort of like, sure. that was a blessing. I'm not saying, you know, that was a blessing. Having a hit record yeah. is enormous in this industry it resonates and it stays with you for years uh, but i'm also a performer i i perform in broadway shows uh i've recorded over 20 albums yep so i'm and, and most of my singing is not in the r b genre most of my performances uh, are more jazz i'm much more jazz orientated and um, that's all I have to say about that. I, you know, I'm just, I'm more of a, of, I'm just a, a, a entertainer. I'm, as Shirley MacLaine would say, I'm a gypsy, you know? <laughs> yeah, you're exactly right. And uh, I was listening to uh, Frida Payne music this afternoon. And I tell you, 
I mean, it's it's a it's like a cast of hundreds and uh, uh, of songs, and and I gotta it, all the viewers out there go check out Frida Payne's music because you're gonna be there for a while, and it's all great. It's all great. yeah. And on top of that, my my late my last uh, recording effort was done, and it was just released this year a few months ago, uh, and here it is. Oh yeah, you know what? Hold on, Frida. I think I have that for you. Wait a second. What's it's the name? Called What's... Let there be love. I did four Let duets. Let there be love. There you yeah, go. Yeah, that's it. I did four duets. I did a duet with the great Johnny Mathis with big band and strings, Kenny Lattimore, D. D. Bridgewater, and Kurt Elling. Yeah, and, and you, then nice. me and then Samoa as well, myself. But um, yeah, it was wonderful that was it was like it was really came out really terrific and i'm very proud of it it's going to be around for a long time do yeah. you find um as you've gotten older in life is it is it still just as easy for you to perform on stage and and keep moving around or you or you kind of you, you you limit things a little more where you let's say not as you know physical on stage or you just kind of you don't even notice it while you're up there singing well you're right it when i'm singing band of gold and i'm moving around after a while i kind of like you know i i do i do realize that like in that that one that was 2011 in london at the at the o2 arena i was that's with, right that's right i was with cliff richards and uh of course if i had to dance and move around like some of these uh young young women now i'd probably get a little winded but I mean, I can still, I mean, I could probably still dance, right. but I would have to kind of like maybe limit the movement <laughs> a little bit. just a little bit, you know? So, so you also have uh, quite a few uh, projects under your belt in the, uh, in the acting field. How did you, uh, how did you get uh, started in acting? Well, I actually, let's say I, I see my I first, the first time I did a film was with Jerry Lewis and that was, and I say, that's really dating me, right? Uh, and that was in the 60s. It was called The Disorderly Orderly. And I just had, I remember I just, that, movie. that was the first time I had to join SAG because I had one line. That oh. was funny. <laughs> and then after that, I did a film with uh, Eddie Murphy. Um, you know, the, his film, The um, uh, Nutty Professor, The Clumps. The Clumps, number two. Yeah, yes. it was number two. Yeah, I had, and that was like, I think the year was 2000, around there sometime. Uh -huh. And then I've, I've done other film. Uh, I did a film called The Divorce, and then I did one called Cordially Invited, and uh, I did a one called, it was like a sci-fi film called Ragdoll, and uh, I've done, you know, and plays, I've done some plays, and I've done several tours of Duke Ellington's Sophisticated Ladies, which was a Broadway show, Broadway nice. hit, and I, I did like six of those companies, and I did uh, the first and the only national tour of Jelly's Last Jam. And um, matter of fact, I was in the cast of the first, the, what they called the world debut here at the Mark Taper uh, Forum Theater downtown in Los Angeles here at the wow. Music Center before it went to Broadway. And, and then I've done The Blues in the Night, another um, uh, Broadway show that uh, I've done several tours of that. I've done six different companies of that so oh i God. do the oh and i do ella fitzgerald i perform nice. an acting acting role as playing ella, ella on the on the legitimate stage and i've played i've done that three times and the name of the play is ella fitzgerald first lady of song and nice. i play ella so, Ella Frida, you, you got to sing all of Ella's, uh, you know, a bunch of Ella's songs in, in that show? Yeah, well, Ella did every, she did so many songs, I could never sing all of them in, in one show. What's but, your uh, favorite? What's your favorite, Ella? Mr. Paganini. How does it go? Let me hear. 30 seconds. The concert was over at Carnegie Hall. The maestro took bow after bow. He said, my dear friends, I have given my all. I'm sorry. It's all over now. But then from the gallery way up high, he suddenly heard this mournful sigh cry. <laughs> Mr. Great. Paganini, please play my rhapsody. And if you cannot play it, won't you sing it? 
And if you can't sing it, you'll simply have to. Squeak and do it all. Uh, Miss Nini, we breathlessly away. Your masterful baton, why don't you sling it? And if you can't sling it, you'll simply have to sweep up a billion dollar do day. Shabbat and booby do do it. We move it out. Wow. <laughs> By the way, do you have a do you have a smurf that's squeaking under your table? Is that your dog? I have a dog. <laughs> Dog, you want to see him? Come yeah, here, bring him up. He sounds, here, he sounds like he's in pain under daddy. there. Daddy, come here, Teddy. Come here, Teddy. Now he's uh, doing. Uh, come on, Teddy. Bring Teddy up. Where's Te oh, my Teddy? my Teddy. Teddy, my goodness. This is my Teddy. His name oh, is Teddy. God. I love. Look at Teddy. Teddy the doggy. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's he a is cutie. Great. That's so he's good. my yeah, little boy. He's my I, little boy. He sounded like what was the movie where if you get them wet, they get crazy. What were the little uh, the little things? It was like a Christmas movie. The guy brought home the one, and then I don't they multiply. Like, come on, oh, you know I the know movie. It's like it's a big movie. I, uh, I think he knows he's on on. He's, he's on, on camera. He's acting shy now. That is so funny. So okay. funny. Frida, no, you... he, was whine... he was like whining. That's what you heard. Yeah. Uh, listen, your, your singing is effortless. And, and, you know, when you talk about Band of Gold, which everybody, of course, associates you with because it was such a, a big hit, you have this new book out now uh, called Band of yeah. Gold, a memoir, Frida Payne. Right. Uh, it, That's it's, it. Right. It's published by uh, Yorkshire Publishing. Um, introduction by Mary Wilson of the Supremes. And your sister was also, your younger sister was in the Supremes, correct? Yes, yeah, she joined the Supremes in 1973. That's right. And then uh, up until the point where uh, they uh, Mary disbanded the group and went solo. And then Sherry formed her, the, all, her own group called Former Ladies of the Supremes. Oh, my goodness. And they work uh, under that under that name, former ladies of the Supremes. So I love it. That's well, Sherry it, Payne. Sherry yeah, Sherry. Payne. Uh, so, yeah. so in this book, Band of Gold. Uh, so, is this basically is it is it your life story? What are we gonna What are we gonna learn about you here? It's a memoir. Of course, that would be my yeah. life story from the time yeah. I was born in Detroit, Michigan, up until let's say like about the early like the 2020, you know, two thousands. That's amazing. Maybe up until 2010 or 14. I was there up until 2014. Yeah, it's about all, the, you know, my life journey, my romances, uh, just my life journey, the things that I've done, you know. Places and by the way, let me ask you a question, Frida, because you are, you know, when you look back, and I, I was, of course, going through your history, and, and you look back at pictures of you, uh, even through Jet Magazine, you were on the cover <laughs> of Jet. Right. And um, I did I mean, several covers of this. Several. Yeah, no, I mean, listen, you, you I'm just looking at some of the shots here. Uh, I even have one I, I thought was pretty funny of you and um, the three late. Right. Isn't that uh, the woman from um, er Kennedy Eartha Kitt? Eartha Kitt. Kitt. Yeah, yeah. Eartha Kitt. Look at you guys. Nice. Um, I, I got to imagine the men were just flocking <laughs> to you. No. Well. You could be know. my. Go ahead. You could tell us it the truth. It comes with the territory, you know. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, still good. get that, but probably not as much. But I get. You know what I get now? I get guys, young men saying, "Oh, my dad was in love with you," or this and that. And then well, I, I mean, look at you coming up to me and saying, "Oh, my husband had a crush on you," and I'm saying, "Oh my god." Of course. <laughs> Of course. I mean, you were absolutely, I was saying to myself, wow, she was a gorgeous, gorgeous woman. Uh, not that you're not gorgeous now, but I just, I could imagine you're, you're riding on top of the world with a hit song. I, I, I mean, managers, talent, I mean, everybody has to be hitting on you at the time, I would think. Well, well, not everybody, but a lot. <laughs> we'll learn about it in the book, right? We'll, hey, the book. you'll learn about it. Absolutely. You'll <laughs> learn about it in the book. Yeah, uh, that's, that's Frida, great. I, I've got to ask you, you know, such such a uh, legendary, iconic career, you know, the uh, Broadway, the 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 music and, and the movies. If if Frida Payne was starting out right now, what would Frida Payne now? What what sort of advice would you give yourself to that young Frida Payne starting out? 
like now, if I were starting out now, uh, oh, what yes. I what what would I give a young woman like myself starting yes. out now? Yes, keep your mind, keep hold on to your values. If w listen to your gut, and don't be swayed if you don't feel something's right. If you feel something's not right, don't give in to someone else just because this is something they want. Because especially when you're young, that's when people take the most advantage of you. And they do it because you're young and they think you're dumb. Absolutely. But keep, maintain your, maintain your principles. And uh, I mean, everybody, I've got to tell you the truth. Not every young woman has had, let's say really good parents a good, a good upbringing. Not mm -hmm. everybody. I found that out growing up, you know, but most women who have, they have a tendency to sometimes, if, if you have a, a lack of self-esteem, you have a tendency to be swayed more easily. But, but maintain, if your pa parents or, or gave you good advice about your morals and about decency and all that kind of stuff and life lessons, try to follow those rules. You know, don't think it's... Right. Uh, oh, that's old stuff. That's old timey. Yeah, well, it's that's, not that's, old timey. It's young. not old timey. It's like <laughs> a lot of these young women now. They're 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 a lot. It's a lot more sexuality and you know going on in the performances. There was a time when if you were a singer, you didn't come out uh, dressed like a like a stripper or a chorus girl with all your thighs out and you, and your right. butt hanging out and everything in your head. You know that that wasn't called for. That was it's a distraction and it, and it sends the wrong message because where do you go from there? Where do you go? Right. Right. If, you, right. if you've shown everything and given yeah, up to go. everything, where's there to go? <laughs> That's right. You know? So you You're have 100%. to, like, I, I've got to give Megan, a, not so, no, Cardi B, I've got to give her, I'm going to give her a compliment. Go ahead. I watched the American Music Awards this past Sunday. She hosted, sure. She hosted the whole thing. And you know, in the past, we know she's been quite, she sells a lot of sexuality and she sells nudity, right? Right? She Absolutely. turned the tables and I was so proud of her. She was classy. Whoever whoever was the designer or the uh, the stylist for that show that, that dressed her ought to get an award yeah. because she she came out like a real sophisticated lady. The yeah, whole nice. show. She came and she's got, she had, I'll tell you, Cardi B, half the time I can't understand what she's saying, but it doesn't matter. Um, I know. She, I, she I, I is. The same way. She, her, her face is absolutely gorgeous. She, she has a gorgeous, a gorgeous face, Cardi B. Um, yeah, she has a gorgeous face. And that yeah. girl who's on the on the heavy side, what's that, Lizzo? Lizzo. She's gorgeous. Yes, yes, very gorgeous. Absolutely. She's um, just a little. She's just bigger all over, but she's gorgeous. <laughs> right, gorgeous. <laughs> uh, Frida, so listen. Here's what I did. Um, I picked out three cover songs from Band of Gold because that's so. If you put in Band of Gold cover songs, there's thousands of them. Everybody's covering your tune. Uh, and I know you redid it with Belinda Carlisle recently, right? You guys did. redid that. I picked out three of them about 20 seconds each. And okay. I, wanted, I wanted you to give me your, like, let's we'll play American Idol for a second. I wanted you to give me your thoughts <laughs> on each one. I know, you, you're, I know who you're going to play. I know you, who you're gonna... you let me know. Well, they're not, they're not famous people. None of them are famous. So they're all, they're all just folks that I okay, picked. Okay, let's hear it. Let's go want. with it. Well, let's... here's what, here's what I want to do. I'm going to, and then after we'll have, we'll have you do like 30 seconds of it the way it's supposed to be. Um, so here you go. So here's, here's Band of Gold cover. Number one. There you walk right through that door and love me like you tried before. Six to be gone. All that's left is a man of gold. All that's left of the dreams I hold. The band of gold and the memory. What'd you think of that one? What scale of one to ten? What do you give it? Oh, <laughs> I think Frida, I think she just hit the off button. <laughs> Frida, I'll come back. That, oh, I'll there she is. One, I'll give that one from one to ten. I'll give. Oh, we just, wait, hold on, Frida. We just lost your, uh, 
We just I, love, I come said, on I, back. The one you just played, I give it a, like a five. A five? Okay. And you could hear us okay? I hear you now. Yeah. All right. So here is, here's Band of Gold number two. And I wait in the darkness of a lonely room, filled with sadness, filled with doom, hoping soon that you are right through the door and love me like you tried before since you've been <laughs> okay i can't that's, that's it, it's a, is she is she a, a somebody from england or something i i don't know i didn't sounds know. like it that sounds like yeah i would say i would give her a six a six oh you liked her better than the band before yeah i didn't okay. oh the band was okay it was it was nice to hear it but it wasn't like you know i'm just being exact okay and here is here's number three i think this one this one these takes, are versions i've never heard before by the way that, well that's why i figured you'd like it the, this one takes kind of the weirdest turn for me take a look here's band of gold number three All these She really experienced that, that had went through that experience. Wow. That like was the Alan really, Alanis. Yeah. Her heart is really breaking, but I mean, the vocally, it wasn't that great, but like emotionally she gave it that, like, uh, uh, like that gloom, doom and gloom. Yes. Like, <laughs> Oh my God, he walked out on me on a wedding night. Oh my God. Oh, that was the yeah. Alanis, Alanis Morissette version. Would you free to do us the honor of like 30, 45 seconds of, of Band of Gold? We need we need to hear the from the original. Okay. Go ahead. Now that you're gone, all that's left is a band of gold. All that's left of the dreams I hold is a band of gold. And the memories of what love could be if you were still here with me. Love it. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> love that. oh you know, nice. speaking of versions, you know, was at my show at Birdland last, last night, night in New York? Yeah, who? Yeah. I was going to mention it. Locke. She oh, also yes. covered it. She did a recording of Bandigo. She covered it. Kimberly Locke. Kimberly Locke. That's right. From American Idol. And she does it. And she did it just like I did. She did it just like mine. That's right. Yes. And you were you were at uh, Birdland last night in New York. And you're still, you're traveling around, right? You're doing concerts. I you got am. Own. And yeah, Kimberly, I, if you would ask me to rate her, I would say I would give her a 10. A 10. Yes. <laughs> I'm leaving for London this afternoon. I've got to hurry up and finish my packing. Oh, okay. Hey, I got to yeah. tell you, Frida, you are an inspiration to many of us. And you keep taking care of yourself because uh, we, we want to keep seeing you. And here okay, you. I, and I, I free to listen that. real quick before you leave. I know you you used to do uh, a show called Love and Pain uh, with, Darlene, with Darlene. With Darlene Love. With Darlene Love. Da Darlene Love was a friend of ours. Suki, of course, not here today, but we used to do a morning show here in New York. Darlene was a friend of the show, and I pulled a quick video of us singing for her, and I want you to see how she reacts to us singing a little Lionel Richie. We asked her to give you know to rate us on how we would do and. Here it is. Take a look real quick. And then forever. Get, get on, Kate. Get on, Kate. <laughs> I will hate your lover. <laughs> I'm losing it, Darlene. And, and I, I feel I with you. I love this song. Go ahead. In my arms. I want to sing this. Go ahead. This love yeah, nicely done. Okay. Be there. I need to tell you this, yes. darling. There's no other love like your love. And I, as long as I live. 
<laughs> she, she, I think she walked out. She really appreciated Lionel Richie after that. She, you know what? I think she she loved it. <laughs> she was. She, she we was, had a good she time. She was enjoying it. Ah, oh, she was great. She's great. And nice. I I didn't know you guys worked together, but that's. Uh, oh yeah! That's... Not only that, I've uh, I've I've done a couple of her Christmas shows. Uh, diff you know, different years. Yeah. That is amazing. Well, listen, the book is Band of Gold. It's a memoir by Frida Payne. You get the intro by Mary Wilson from The Supremes. It's published by Yorkshire Publishing. Uh, Frida, listen, it's and I'm sure it's available wherever books are sold. Uh, Frida, thank you so much for coming on. Thank Absolute you. Nice pleasure. To you. Thank you. It's Amazon and Am also Barnes and Noble. Barnes and Noble. Do you do? Are you doing any book signings? You're going to be doing any signings? Well, I did. I just did one in New York about th about two and a half week or three weeks ago. I did one oh, in New York okay. at the cutting room. Oh, they, okay. And, uh, oh, nice. I will be doing some more book signings. Yeah. I'll be doing one in Palm Springs, December the 10th nice. at a venue called Oscars. And I'm going to perform there as well. So oh, I'm going to be there. And the guy who wrote, who wrote it, co-wrote it with me, Mark Bego is going to be there as well. And we're going to be doing little, like little reading excerpts from the book. That's Oscars in Palm Springs, December the 10th. Oscars, Palm nice. Springs, December. That we have a, Oscars, a lot, lot of audience Springs, December there. December the tenth. Yeah. Frida, next <laughs> time you're in New York, I want to come see you because I want to get uh, you know the full show up close and personal. Uh, and thank you so much, young lady. Absolute honor and a pleasure. Yes. And an um, amazing career. You're and you're not okay. slowing down at all. Listen, have a safe flight over to London. All right. Thank you. Bye, Frida. Frida. Thank you so much. Bye, bye. Uh, <laughs> Phil, what a what a what a great great woman. Yeah, I mean, sitting here talking to a legend. I mean, I mean come on, Frida Payne, for God's sake. Anytime I said, hey, listen, uh, we have to anybody, we got Frida Payne's coming on this week. Oh, band of gold, band of gold. Everybody, yeah. everybody knows Frida Payne. Uh, and by the way, this shot I put up here, this is from her on Soul Train. Right. Uh, I mean, she was, you know, what's amazing. I saw this shot and I remember Jane Kennedy. She used to be on like that's incredible, or she was a like a sportscaster, the woman all the way on the right. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, Eartha Kitt, uh, she was in Eddie Murphy's movie, um, Boomerang, and she also played a little cat woman at one time. But yeah, boy, uh, Frida Payne was, I mean, listen, you could call her a, she was a sex symbol back yeah, in the day. Yeah, was. I'm sitting here, I was looking at her. And I'm going, wow. Yeah, she's she, a beautiful she lady. She's still beautiful. very attractive, very yeah. beautiful. I mean, she got beautiful eyes. She's got, I mean, and just great, just great, man. So, Phil, did you have time to think about Will Smith's uh, vomiting after the uh, sex? Any any thoughts on that? Yeah, actually, I tried to repress <laughs> that. <laughs> I'm, you I'm, hope, I'm developing. You hoping, hoping I'm to develop, forget about it. I'm developing a psychosomatic uh, reaction oh, just goodness. looking at that story. Listen, Philly kid, you and I, what did we knock out earlier uh, this week? It was uh, a little under the boardwalk. Under the boardwalk. I think we're, we're up to uh, about 100,000 views on that thing. Let's, uh, you know, Frida, pay, Frida got me into doing the music. So let's pop that up a little bit because it's the day before Thanksgiving. Suki is off today. You and I are here. We got a couple minutes to go. Here's a little of what Phil and I did. I think it's up to uh, about 100,000 views already. Nice. Philly kid, do you hear the ocean? Are we down by the beach? Come on, baby, let's do a little drifters. Oh, when the sun beats down and burns the tar up on the roof. And your shoes get so hot, you wish your tired feet were fireproof. Where are we, Phil? Under the boardwalk. Oh, yeah. Down by the sea, yeah. On a blanket with my baby, that's where I'll be. Uh, from the park, you'll hear the happy sound of a carousel. And you can almost taste the hot dogs and french fries they sell. Under the boardwalk, down by the sea, yeah. On a blanket with my baby, that's where I'll be. Come on now. 
Under the boardwalk Out of the sun Under the boardwalk We'll be having some fun Under the boardwalk Of people walking above Under the boardwalk Oh, we'll be falling in love Under the boardwalk Boardwalk Ah, uh, Philly kid, you used to spend some time under the boardwalk, right? On a blanket with your baby? Sure. Little fries? Hot dogs from Nathan's, maybe? I know you. Hey, under the boardwalk, down by the sea, yeah. On a blanket with my baby, that's where I'll be. Come on now, baby. Under the boardwalk. Out of the sun Under the boardwalk We'll be having some fun Under the boardwalk A people walking above Under the boardwalk We'll be falling in love Under the boardwalk Boardwalk Under the boardwalk Down by the sea on a blanket with my baby, that's where I'll be. Where, Philly Ken? On a blanket with my baby, that's where I'll be. One more. On a blanket with my baby, that's where I'll be. Ah, Philly Ken. Some of our finest work right there, I got to tell you. I think so. I think so. And I think, listen, since it, it's the day before Thanksgiving, we're not on tomorrow. We won't be back till next Wednesday when we start the full shows again. By the way, we've got some incredible guests coming up yep. um, next week, the week after. Uh, just c- celebrities, actors, actresses uh, from the from the world of music. <laughs> I mean, I've got two magicians coming up, Phil. One was a, a huge star in AGT. The other one, Masters of Illusion, one of them is uh, he's going to be on from Bangkok. So it, that's going to be incredible. One of my favorite um, towns. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been there a few times, right? <laughs> uh, Patrick Kuhn. Uh, it's either K-U-N. So it's either Kuhn or Kun. Probably Kuhn. Patrick Kuhn, I would think. Um, he's coming on. And um, we, we just my, my brain is just spinning because we have so many people that we've, we've booked for the next couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. But while we're emptying out the computer and it is, you know, day before Thanksgiving, we might as well go with one of our others that we did uh, earlier on. Yeah, let's do and, it. And uh, bang out a little uh, tip. Hey, Philly kid. Hey, Scotty. Yep. What do you say we do a little uh, Tim McGraw? Oh, I like that. I like it. I want some more of it. Well, let's give it to him, Here Phil. Here we go. Yep. Spent $48 last night at the county fair. Oh, yeah, yeah. I throw it out my shoulder, but I want her that teddy bear. Phil, she's got you whipped. She's got you wrapped. She got me saying, sugar pie, money, darling, and dear. I ain't seen the Braves play a game all year. I'm going to get fired if I don't get some sleep. My long-lost buddies say I'm getting in too deep. But I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I tried so hard. I can't rise above it. Don't know what it is about that little girl I'm loving, but I like it, I love it, and I want some more of it. Phil, yeah. uh, so what do your parents think about all this? I mean, do they think you're like in too deep? Do they think it's too much for you? Do they think that you're getting out of control? What do your parents think about all this, Phil? My mama and my daddy try to teach me courtesy. But it never sank in until that girl got a hold of me. So what are you doing now? Anything changed? Now I'm holding umbrellas and opening up doors. I'm taking out the trash and I'm sweeping my floors. Crossing my fingers and counting every kiss. Praying that it keeps going on like this. 
just cause I like it, I love it, I want some more of it, I tried so hard, I can't rise above it, don't know what it is about that little girl loving, but I like it, I love it, I want some more of it, I gotta wash my trust, and dress up, to pick her up and watch TV. And she sits down on the sofa She moves a little closer She can't get enough of me I understand yeah, but I, I like, like it. it I love it I want some more of it I tried so hard I can't rise above it I don't know what it is About that little gal loving But I like it I love it I want some more of it yeah. Oh, Philly, it's good to see you So happy with your new girlfriend got you wrapped around her finger. I get it. It's cool. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You just keep singing, Phil. No one will ever know. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. Yeah. Don't forget to turn out the lights. <laughs> Woo. You're muted. Don't want to be muted. Rule one of being on, of being on. I love when people write in under those posts when they say, we love you so much better alone. And I write in, I write in, yeah, but listen, Phil loves to sing with me. I don't want to let him down. I, you know, <laughs> I don't want, it'll break his heart if I tell him he can't sing with me. Uh, it's so funny. Uh, so listen, great. man, I don't know if you, uh, you, you just co-hosted for an hour and a half. I don't know if there's something you want to sing before we hit Thanksgiving, but you don't have to. We just did two songs. Um, I was thinking maybe for Thanksgiving, if I have some time, I'll put together something like Frida sang today. We had so many celebs and singers. May I put together a little montage of people who have sang on the show over the last couple of weeks. Oh, um, yes. You know, we've had some up and coming young stars who are amazing with their bands. Uh, I'll do a little montage. Maybe we post that for uh, for Thanksgiving. But, uh, oh, hey, here we go. So a lovely young lady. And Brigitte Deg peterson from Denmark. Look at that, huh? Unbelievable. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I will sing a tune. And uh, Go ahead, I'm, Philly I'm kids. Inspired. Take us home, baby. Take I'm us home. I'm inspired by uh, my wife and I's recent trip to Walmart where two nice. months in it. Two months in advance, they're already playing Christmas music, and <laughs> I, I heard this one blasting on the speakers. Feliz Navidad. Go ahead, Philly. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. Nice, Philly kid. Uh, also, listen, I want to thank uh, our main man, uh, David Salador, for getting us Frida Payne. Yes, thank you, David. Uh, thank you. Working tirelessly to get us Frida. Uh, so I just want to thank him for getting that, uh, done for us. And, uh, Philly kid, listen, man, have a good Thanksgiving. You too. Uh, you maybe, well. maybe you and I pop, maybe we do a pop-up show in the next couple of days. Who knows? Possibly. Um, but, uh, I'm sure there'll be a couple duets we'll post, uh, later on, but uh, another great show. Yes. And, um, we keep rolling along, my friend. If you, uh, if you, if you looked at Facebook and Instagram today, you saw, I put up a couple big things about us. Uh, signing a deal with a company called Golden Media and uh, Syndication. Yes. And uh, they are going to be working on uh, finding us a, a home on TV and, and more streaming and distribution and advertisers. Uh, you know, up to this point, we've been just content, baby, content. And as they yes. say in the business, time to monetize this thing, Phil. Uh, <laughs> that's my yes. favorite. Yeah, it's, it's my favorite. You know, can we... Can we make a little money with this time to monetize everybody? <laughs> um, and and also uh, our boy Jeff Meltzer at Meltzer Media. Uh, we got all kinds of things going on. Jeff, by the way, is going to come on. He's going to sing for us uh, one of these days. Very, very talented guy. Good looking fella. The women love him. And uh, he's going to come on and sing. Nice. But, uh, that's it, Philly kid. Great show. Um, 
I feel like uh, Jernis Corchado was on like a month ago. Uh, she was our first guest today. Marsha Collier, Frida Payne, and uh, Philly Kid. Why don't you uh, just give us the uh, sign off, baby? Go ahead. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Da, 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 da. We hate to leave you, but we really must say, Scotty. Oh, good night, sweetheart. Good night.